Welcome, everybody, to the House of Destiny. We have a very special conversations for you this week with an old and dear friend of ours, Steve Schultz. Now, many of you may know Steve Schultz because of Elijah's dreams. And uh, we just wanted to invite him here today and talk to him because Steve understands a lot about the prophetic. And anybody who knows about Elijah List and Elijah's dreams, you already know that. And if you didn't know, you will today. So welcome, Steve Schultz. It's an honor to have you on. My mother, Jane, is also yes. with us here today. Hi, Jane. And, Good to see um, you both. It's just lovely to see you. Hi. Well, thank you. Good to it's, see I you, too, it. Steve. It's been, it's been a while, but um, I, was, I was actually just speaking to, to Donna about when was the, when, how long ago was it that we actually met you? I was trying to figure out the year, and it must have been back in uh, 1990-something. It was. Uh, when, when did you met start in, the Elijah list, Steve? That actually started in 1997, and there's a little bit of a story with that. But I saw, I remember meeting you for the first time, I think it was 2000, and it's either 2003 or 2004, although I did come to a conference in Portland at the high school, so I might have met you there, uh, Jane. I don't spend so long. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I, I remember meeting you when you were sick. Oh, yeah. That was what oh, I remember you? most about you when you were sick. Yes. Yeah, I remember that, that, that very well. And um, that was uh, was quite an ordeal. Um, and I'm going to, a little later on, I'm going to tell you a story about a, a word that I gave to, to Kim when I was right in the throes of that. A lot of people don't know that I, I really nearly died. You know, that was like, it started on me in 2005. It was a seven year ordeal, but I'm like, I'm right now, I'm 190 pounds. I was under 100 pounds. I was less than 100 pounds uh, when maybe that's when you met me, but it was really intense. So. I did. Yes. yes that was when I met you, and, and you were very, very thin. And, and <laughs> Steve, you were very sick. I knew that. Definitely very, very sick. Um, but I'm yeah, so I, glad to see how, how well you're looking now. <laughs> you're looking well, great. Well, yeah, you know what? When, <laughs> I know, you do other, look great. It went the other way around. I was so skinny for so many years, and I, I, I would have died, but... Uh, Kim, Chuck Pierce gave me a word one time. He said, when God's done with healing you, you're going to have trouble losing weight. Today, I bragged to my wife that I finally got down to 189. I've been trying all year long to get down in the one, one, not, <laughs> uh, not one, yeah, one nine, oh my God, am I saying that? 190, sorry, 189. Yeah. So anyway, I've been trying all year. So yeah, I have the weight problem. <laughs> So it's, I'm, I'm happy to have that. I used that's to tell God. Well, that's a good problem. Me, that's a yeah, good I used, problem. If you'll let me eat, I will never complain about, you know, wait again. Well, I'm complaining a little bit now, but I'm trying to keep my promise. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what, Steve? Um, you, you have followed my father and known my father for a very long time. And you did start the Elijah list, which isn't the same as the streaming, because, of course, we weren't doing streaming or Internet stuff then. So what is it that prompted you or, or what made you start the Elijah list website? What was it that happened? Yes. Well, so that happened in 97. But going back seven years before that, I'm I'm like 35 years old. I'm 67 now for context. When I was 35 years old. I'm sitting over the table at lunch with my pastor in Dallas, Texas, where I lived at the time. And he just was making conversation and he started talking about, he was from Vineyard, Vineyard Pastor, and he said something about the prophets or saying this. And I said, wait, wait, stop, hold on. Are you telling me there's prophets today? Because I was a total Vineyard guy, but I'd never heard that. And he began to tell me, and I, I give you my word, the moment that happened in 1990, I knew my life would never be the same. Somehow my spirit went, and I just went and grabbed it. You know, I, I, I knew that was going to change my life. That would be years, another seven years before I had a business that was failing. By this time, we lived in the northwest in the area not too far from where we are now. And uh, I'd taken advanced prophetic training by that time. 
I had really begun to immerse myself in it. I was then prophesying in my local church. But the Internet was just really starting to bloom. The, the, the World Wide Web was only out about a year. I think it was 96 when I first got on the World Wide Web and people would say, what's that? And, and I started following these lists and their lists were brand new. You know, if you, Netscape was a browser and you could do this. And I, I started listening or reading these different lists that would share some prophetic words. And they would say things like this. And this was very common in that day, in 1997. They were saying, America is a stench in the nostrils of God, and the church is a stench in the nostrils of God, and the people, God's people are a stench in his nostrils. And I kept thinking, this isn't right. This is not what I was trained to do in the prophetic. Uh, and so I said, well, maybe I can do a list. At least I have some fun doing it. Now, you guys, I was not trying to start a ministry or business, nothing. I just was going to have some fun. I still had my other business and I made up a list of 30 friends that went to my, mostly at my local church. That's all, that's all I had. I got, had their emails. And I, I gathered like three words that were very encouraging. And I accumulated them uh, into one email, all text in those days. And then I sent it overnight, went to bed. I get up in the morning and there's two or three emails saying, subscribe, please. And I'm going, subscribe. It's in the subject line, subscribe. This was not even a thought in my head. I give you my word. I'm just, so I thought, well, okay, I guess I could, I could let other people get in on this. So that's, that's what I did. Again, no ministry was in my mind. So I would let them subscribe. It just started popping like popcorn more and more and more. And pretty soon there's 200, then there's 300, then there's a thousand. And all of a sudden I'm going, I got myself a ministry and I wasn't even trying, you know, um, uh, by the 98, my, my company had completely de been destroyed by the Internet. The very thing that was starting to give m my life to me, which was the Internet, had just killed my last business. A long story. but So I began, and then I started making contacts by accident. I'd had a prophetic word from another prophet that said about the year or two earlier, you're going to connect the prophets by computer and he didn't have lingo. I didn't have lingo. But he said, you're going to connect the prophets by computer. And I realized I was doing this. So somewhere along the line, um, I began people. Someone mentioned Kim Clement. And I I didn't know. And I would kind of try to scour the World Wide Web and see if I could find anything. The websites were very simple in those days. The only way I knew to hear him was to go. He was holding... Um, meetings in Portland, at the, Portland, Oregon, at these high schools. He would come up to Portland. I don't know how, if he was going to other high schools or if it was mainly Portland. So I went there. They got, I have to, there's a couple things about me you got to know. Number one, I had an ear problem then. I was it, large, large, uh, loud sounds were excruciating to me. I'm about to go to a Kim Clement concert, and, and loud sounds were Oh, my were goodness. Intense. And also <laughs> my, my, uh, my, how do I say this? I, from the time I would launch this thing, I knew something important was happening. I never looked back. I never thought, is this important? I thought somehow this is important. So that was not an issue with me. What was the issue was that I didn't consider myself important. So my self-esteem in those days were way down to the bottom. So I went down to this the first time I went, and I sat somewhere in the middle, and it was painful because I had this condition, I got up, went to the restroom, found some toilet paper, and stuffed it in my ears, and came back. And but it was so loud, I thought I'm, I can never come back to this. And I thought, well, this was good, but I'm not going to come back to this. <laughs> Something I can't even tell you what it was. My memory doesn't serve on that. But I something got a hold of me, and I had to have more by that time. So it would probably a year or two went by, and went back again. Um, as far as I know, knew, and no one knew me about. I was still, you know, as a small little list, and and I showed up there, and the concert went. You know, it was a concert, and Kim did what he did. When it was all over, it was either Hannah or Miranda came up, and I, I, I just knew these blonde young ladies that sang with them, and they said Kim Clement would like you to come back. Uh, and I was startled because I, again, low self esteem. I didn't feel like it was worthy, but I'd had a word for Kim. I don't remember what it was. But I went back there, and he greeted me and said, I don't remember the conversation, but I said, I had a little word for you, and I started to whisper this thing to him. And he goes, wait, wait, stop. Hey, everybody, come over here. This is the word of the Lord. And I, 
And it was like, uh, there was no way I would seek such a audience with the staff or anybody. I have never gra gravitated toward the camera or the public. You know, I, I would teach up side, but I, up, up front, but I would never gravitate toward that. I always try and stay in the back. So anyway, that was the beginning of many instances where Kim would jump out into my life and with his gift and his anointing, and he would then begin to build me up. I don't know if he knew he was doing that. But he would begin to to plant in my on my in myself that that not only was the ministry important but I was important. I, I think one a few years after that I went back to Portland, and he calls me out of the audience. And I remember that particular night I was feeling especially down on myself. It wasn't that I beat myself up. It's just that I would give I wouldn't give myself a break if an opportunity. And he called me out of the audience. He said, "Steve Schultz, come up here. I need your help." Put your back on me. I need to pray over. And, and he walked all over the audience, and he wanted me to have my hand on his shoulder or his back to give him support. I can't tell you. I went home that night, and I remember I kept saying out loud, dreaming. I remember I took a nap, and I'm driving home back. Now we live in Oregon by that time. And I started saying, what love is this? What love is this? And I was referring to both. I was referring to Kim's love towards me and I was referring to God's love toward me that they were both in that set in that sentence and I was feeling so so loved on I could feel it while I'm talking about it and and so I was being built up slowly but surely so uh, I'm trying to think if there's anything else ask me the next question because uh, I've got well, different I, notes I have, I'm going to grab I have a question yeah well, well I, I do have, I have a question because, um, you know, we've talked a little bit about this before, Steve, and, um, you know, you, you had quite a bit to do with getting the word out to people about who my dad was around the time, around that same time period, because he had prophesied 9-11, and he'd prophesied uh, uh, George W. Bush and all sorts of things he was prophesying about. And people came to know who my dad was because of the Elijah list. A lot of people did uh, that had would never have heard of him or or known anything about him. And you know what you do is it, it is sort of unique. It's like the gathering of, of of the prophets. What is God showing? Not just one prophet, but all of them because that creates that bigger picture. And I know that's something my dad was definitely aligned with. And so um, I can also tell just, but from our conversations, not even speaking to my dad about it, just from hearing this, that my dad being a prophet and being prophetic would have recognized that destiny in you as wow. well as the need to uplift you when you need it because you know, I, I certainly understand that feeling of, of, of feeling small. And, and then you find yourself in a situation where God's given you quite a task and you're saying, God, why is it me? And one thing I will say about really? dad is dad was very good at helping people with that. And I think both you and I and even mom are people who needed that to carry us through the time we are in now. And totally. so, um, you know, it's, it's very special to us at the House of Destiny and to our family, our connection with you, because that was God doing that. Obviously, if you hear us all talk about it separately, you wouldn't know. But God orchestrated that to make sure not only that the prophets were out there prophesying the right thing, but that there was someone there to gather it together, make sense of it, and then share it with as many people as possible, which is essentially I, the gospel, you know, you know spreading the gospel. A, that's part of it. I, that's so true, uh, Donay, and I, I wasn't in touch with that. It was either 20, 2003 or 2004, Kim agreed to let me come out and bring a camera, camera crew. I actually hired someone from Dallas. He was holding his meetings in Carrollton, and so... Where, which I happened to live in Carrollton when I lived in Dallas. That was where I lived, so I was familiar with that area. So he's, we did, I can't remember if we shot the video before or after the service, but I'm sitting there while the worship is going, and I'm sitting there by Deb. I think I asked if her name was Deb. It rang a bell. And this, these were the days where, remember, I said yes. that I knew that the Elijah list was important, 
But I didn't honestly realize how important. I didn't realize the impact it was having. I knew I was kind of becoming the biggest list that people would talk about, but I was still, I couldn't believe what I was, what was happening. To this day, I still can't believe what is happening. Yeah. But I sat next to Deb, and we were just making conversation, and yeah. she said, Steve, you will never know what you've done for Kim. He wouldn't be here. And I, I said, no, I don't know that. I had no idea that that was that that would be true. It was extremely honoring to me. She was just making conversation. But I had to, you know, there's a, you learn about the team and the man because Kim could have had an attitude that don't anybody tell Steve, you know, don't, you know, he could have had a, a bad attitude or something like that. But for her to know that, right, that meant she'd had those conversations. And uh, uh, I don't, yes. to this day, if, if somebody tells me, any ministry will tell me, you don't, have any idea what you've done for this ministry? I still have the same surprise. It's a delight, but anyway, mm -hmm. Kim was so good at building up. So anyway, I'm well, I think it's a, it's a beautiful. God has given you. God has given you a, a beautiful destiny, Steve. And um, there's a, a, a such a gentle spirit about you, which I think is is necessary in this season. That you are approachable. And sometimes you're having to deal with difficult and controversial topics. And oh, your yeah. character and personality makes it easier for people to connect with it. Mm -hmm. um, I, I can certainly say that from my own relationship with you is that I don't feel walls. I feel safe. And I think um, that your whole character and personality was designed that way so that you could fulfill this destiny that you're doing. But I do have another question. I know you and my dad had some pretty funny interactions together um, over the years and sort of an interesting relationship because you didn't hang out a lot because you were both busy people, but you did connect from time to time and things would happen. And I know you might have a few, a few uh, memories of, of things that happened between you. Yeah, let me, let me detail this. There's... There's one of my notes that I was going to make sure, because it was around that same time period of the Dallas area, and I went out. It was our first co uh, conference yeah, with Kim, and uh, he agreed to come. I think Graham Cook had given me a word that you need to invite Kim, which I did. I was stunned that he agreed to come. I didn't know anything about paying someone of that caliber, how he made You know, it was literally we were in the, the beginnings of it. So he came on out. It was Canby Grove Conference Center in Oregon. And um, I happened to, there are some things that began with that, some things about when we, when my friend Dave Newman then played in the worship band that night in 2000, is he three or four now? I can't remember. Uh, th that was the beginning of a long friendship. J Dave joined the team eventually he became part of that. I remember I went to Kim afterwards, and I thought, oh, how am I going to handle this? It was We weren't making much money. It was the first big conference we tried. And I, came, I went up to him and said, Kim, uh, how do I – I don't remember what words came to my mouth. I began to ask him, how do I pay you? How do I compensate you? And I think he did take an offering on this last night, and I, I knew that. But I felt like there was supposed to be something more. And he said, don't worry about it as long as it's sacrificial. And, you know, that one went right into me in a very good way because I knew he was teaching me. He was saying, do something more, but make it sacrificial because that's what counts. He wasn't meaning, he, I knew and I, I absolutely knew he wasn't trying to make more money. It was very clear to me. He was saying, give something that's sacrificial. And that taught, I got to tell you, to this day, and of course, I began to learn about Kim that he was extremely sacrificial in his giving. I remember these uh, tapes and whatever it was, CDs that showed up one day years and years ago when CDs was, was, were all the rage. And, and he left a, he, with a message where he said, our finances are horrible. So God told me, give your way out of this, Kim. And so he was sending out massive, all your inventories were coming out to, to all of your supporters. So I, yep, I was just one of the supporters. He was in the office. Is, is that... You know what, Steve? That? I was one of the people packing the stuff and sending it out for free. He came into the office. He said, we're giving everything away for free. And we went through the mailing list. And I was one of those people packing and labeling and sending it out. And wow. that is what he meant. 
the, sa- the, the sacrificial part of it is, is, is again tied in with what is going to assist you in your destiny and in whatever obstacles you have. So you give according to that, not to try to get favor with someone or to, you know, I must give someone a whole lot of money. It's not even about that. If you think about the way Jesus recognized the women with the two, mm. with the two, and the, she gave the most because of, of, of her connection and her life. And so that's actually really beautiful that he said that to you because it really makes sense of, of the offering and what, and, and what giving is and what it's really supposed to mean. And it's really not about making money. It's, it's a, it's a no. beautiful thing between you and God. And so well, that's, and I would, that's, I, that's you know, a, that I watched him. Such a cool story. He had, thank you. He had, um, he was doing things in Israel. He found a special needs place. I don't know how he made the connection, but suddenly he's giving to these places in Israel. The special needs one is the one that I recall. But again, all of those things that I've just said, plus this one, I realized this is the person. What he didn't wouldn't have known is that secretly, I always wanted to be a major, big, huge giver. That was in my heart from years and years even before that. And now I had an actual example to watch it happen. And from that day, especially since Kim has gone home to be with the Lord, we've given hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars uh, away all over the earth. And all over, and I'll just say it's well over a couple million now. And we've, it, and Kim was the one who I credit with that. He didn't know what he was launching unless God showed it to him. So, anyway, well, let me share with you another thing uh, on that. What? When he came out to do that conference, he gave me a word and he gave Graham Cook a word. And I've looked and looked for the actual recording, but Andrea. Uh, uh, Hobart, who was a flight attendant, was there. She's a very young, brand new flight attendant. And that night, when he gave me this word, it impacted her on my behalf so much that she saved it, she copied it, she memorized the work. And and over the years, she would keep reminding me. And she we made contact, and she would say, "I'm a flight attendant. This is what I want, I want to share with you. This word I would have long ago forgotten here." And so she had it. In transcribed form, not the audio. Let me just see if I can find it here. Okay, so I'm going to read this if that's okay. It says, it goes, Steve, you are, it says, Steve, you are not nothing. And this is, Andrea is reminding me over and over and over and over of this. Steve, you are not nothing. You are a force to be reckoned with. You've housed the prophets, gathered the prophets, covered the prophets, you shall have the prophet's reward. I can just feel this as I'm reading it. I'm going to take what you've done and multiply it, says the Lord. You are not nothing. You are a force to be reckoned with. He says it again. And then Andrea is writing below. She says, Kim also prophesied that Steve would be part of the houses that God was raising up. And, it says, and she said, God was raising up. Kim said, God was raising up five houses. And one was a house of brothers united and restored. He said Steve would be a part of this. So I didn't even remember that last part until I was before the show today. I thought, oh, I forgot about that. So tremendously, that, and that, and thanks to Andrea, who not only saved that, but memorized it so he could have it. A couple other things to see I want to share with you. Um, so one time I went out there to see, da- uh, I was in Dallas because my uh, son went to college in um, Texas there. And, I, and so I think it must have been around that time. And I got... Uh, not permission, but I said I was going to go out and watch one of his recordings because you all still, you probably still lived in Dallas, but it doesn't matter because I went out there, went to the um, TBN recording. It was live, that is. It wasn't recording. Walked in. It was pretty far to the back, but Kim was at his keyboard. And I just remember this. It was just such a nice, sweet thing. Another, uh, No man has ever done this. And it was just kind of cute, funny, sweet, whatever the word would be. He sees me walk in and he blows me a kiss like that. And I thought instantly, I thought, no man has ever blown me a kiss and probably no one ever will. But that was just so, it was the kindness. It was like, you know, I don't know he probably does that with hundreds of people, but I've only seen him do it once and it was to me. And it was very, very kind of him to do that. Uh, it sunk in at me that same night. Um, we went I back don't remember him doing room. that to people, no. That was special. That was special for you, Steve. I don't remember him doing that a lot, no. I remember him blowing kisses to God sometimes when he would prophesy. Yes, he would. (laughs) 
Wow. But it wasn't so common that's... for him to, to do that. That was a special thing, yeah. That's huge. That's huge to know yeah, that. And he, that really he used was... to do that quite a bit. He used to do that to God. <laughs> I love that. Well, after that so, recording, you know what, or after that, and, and, ahead, and he ahead. did recognize that. No, he did recognize that uh, the special thing God was doing in you too. So that was yeah. a that was definitely not normal. No, that was special yes. for you, Steve. Thank you. Well, I, we go to the green room after the you know they invited me back to the green room, and that's when I first learned that Hannah was pregnant with her first child. So that puts a date on it somewhere. In there, and I was just making conversation. Kim was standing right there, was talking to Hannah, and I said, "I don't remember. I think I said, uh, when is when is he going to be born?'" And I said, "Well, wait a minute. I can't say when is he." And Kim stops me. He goes, "No, stop, Steve. The first thing out of your mouth. Say the first thing out of your mouth." And I, I wasn't trying to prophesy, but 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 in effect, I was by saying that, and I wasn't correct because her first. I think she had two daughters, but Kim was trying to use a teachable moment Girl. and saying, if you're going to prophesy, go with the first thing out of your mouth. And I learned that about him because he would, he would prophesy incredibly risky things. He was known for that. And I don't yeah. think he second-guessed himself that much. You guys would know more than I. Did he second-guess? I shouldn't. Did he ever say, I shouldn't have said that? No. He would question things. Like one time I remember he was in France and he prophesied about something that happened, had happened with the Muslims rising up in the 7th century. And he walked off the platform and he said, what happened in the 7th century? <laughs> <laughs> that kind of thing happened often. But he would. That's an example of him just saying exactly what God told him to say. And he had no idea historically right. what had happened in the 7th century. And it turned out it was correct what he was prophesying, that there was something that had happened. <laughs> so the, I see exactly what you mean. He was, he was saying to you that initial thing, don't overthink it because the human mind uh, can can mess up the the prophetic a bit. You know, you'll know my you'll notice Dad used to seclude himself a little bit, and he wasn't yeah. being stuck up or not wanting to be social because he was a very social person. It was yeah. because he knew that too much information. Let's say he was in a church, too many people gossiping, too many people talking, would affect what God was going to do there, and that was very important. He knew it was extremely important. So. Well, if he if he thought about it, he probably wouldn't say it. So that's right. why. He, if he thought about it too much, anything specific, he probably he would not nervous, like, want Trump. to prophesy. Yeah. What am I saying I about mean, Trump? <laughs> <laughs> Good thing he didn't think too much about that. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, and by the way, on that one of those same trips, I ended up at you guys' house. I don't think it was the Dallas trip on, on the TV and recording. It might have been on the Carrollton recording, but I ended up at that's probably the first time I remember meeting the family. Uh, officially but uh, to me it was this is just a quick thing i thought it was it's in the middle of october i walk into your beautiful home in dallas and here's this tree decorated the most gorgeous christmas tree you've ever seen and i said it's october guys <laughs> what's going on so what was that you jane are you the one that did that <laughs> yes <laughs> yes i used beautiful. to make a big deal of christmas at the with all the kids, you know, I've got five, five biological Kim and I had, and then, of course, Kim and I adopted five special needs children from China, which I'm still raising. Uh, the youngest two are 10 years old, so wow. I'm busy with that. Very busy. Yes. And we're still keeping Christmas with lots of decorations. We keep that up. Yes. We definitely do. Uh, well, I just thought it was fun. But I have more questions that. to ask you, Steve. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. I, I want to know more, you know, now that we're, we're kind of coming to the end of our interview, I, I do want to make sure to get this in because, you know, you know, Dad prophesied about Donald Trump and many, 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 many of the things that we have seen transpire over the past, I would say, six or seven years especially. Mm -hmm. And I know that you have a unique perspective because you're hearing from a lot of prophetic voices. And, um, and I know when I've come and been interviewed on, on Elijah's streams before, we've discussed, you know, you don't really find that same level of prophetic right now in this season. And so I was just wondering, you know, what are you seeing 
uh, right now? You know, as you as you're observing events transpiring, do you have anything in particular that you you would like to share, or that you've noticed, or that you think is important? Well, you know, I'm kind of an aggregator of all of the prophetic, so sometimes I don't know what's my own discernment in what I see going on. But uh, by the way, you know, you had asked me before what was the most profound. Uh, pro- prophecies are most accurate or whatever that we, I, as far as I'm concerned, Kim's Trump prophecies are the most profound I've ever seen. He kept doing it over and over, over a period of time, even to there's one I can't, I believe we're watching it right now where he said there's two presidents, you know, it's one, I don't know if that's in the same one where he was saying, I'll fool the people or if that was a different one, you would know that. Donna, but um, those prophecies about the two presidents. It was a different that. one, yeah, but tied in together. Yeah, yeah so I do see that. Because I we think, found that two presidents prophecy later. I think there's the, 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 the prophets that I know. Now, there's many more that I've never met or some I've never heard of, but the prophets that I know that are along the lines of Kim, and I don't know if anyone ever that I know presents the way, I mean, Kim carried himself like a prophet. He prophesied like a prophet. He dressed like a prophet. You know, nobody, but I mean, you have the two that are probably closest are Robin Bullock and you have um, Hank Kuhneman. They're kind of, you know, uh, in the vein. But the one that was more fun to hear and watch was was Kim. You know, he would, he would, and then he would, he would prophesy nationally and internationally and then he starts something with the people, you stand over here, and he'd start prophesying this one. He'd stop in the middle, he'd go over and prophesy someone else. And eventually he might pull three people out, and he's giving three separate prophecies. And then he connects the dots. I don't know if you guys have seen him do that, where all of a sudden these people are connected, and he didn't even know they were connected in some special way. So uh, I love what God's doing in the prophetic. I love what God's doing in the nations, and uh, I love the prophecies. Um I don't know if you guys may or may not have time to hear about the the word that I gave Kim. I don't I don't know how your time is. He gave yes. I gave him I yes, gave him yes. a word. Okay, this was 2011. I'm glad I I kept looking for it this week because it was profound. It was in the throes of my sickness. I was I was uh, I'm 190 now. I was like 100 pounds. I was bedridden at that time, but I couldn't sleep all those four years. I was in bed. I couldn't sleep. And one night in 2011, I got up it's December 3, December 4 of 2011, and I got up and I wrote. I won't read it because it's a little bit longer, but I'll send it to you. I think I sent it to you once, Jane. You may have it. And when he when he responded the next morning at 9 o'clock, because I never give prophets words. I never contact a prophet and say, I've got a word that just wasn't who I am. I'm still not that, that way very much, but I, I couldn't sleep. I got this word, I got up and I typed it out to Kim. And and this is what he said. It's from his boss. You remember his boss email. This is quote. This is he said, Steve, this is the most accurate word I have ever received. It's as if you were in my garden with me yesterday. These are the exact things he spoke to me. And I said to him, I have tears right now. I even spoke to him about possibly selling the house. And he said to me that I was to keep the property. I had given this word, and the word is you're supposed to keep the house. Uh, and I mentioned his garden. Now, I knew nothing about his house being uh, up for, th- that it was an issue in his mind and heart. And I said, you're supposed to keep the house and, and because of the garden, and I'll send it to you. But here's what he, I won't read it all, but then at the end he said, one of the things that will bless you, Steve, is this. Yesterday at one point, after I had heard his voice about all of these things, I said, God, it would be so wonderful to hear all of these wonderful words through a human voice. Sometimes it seems so unreal hearing by the Spirit and and a human touch would be soothing and affirming. Not that I doubt you, but this one time I need it confirmed through someone you trust. Speak to that person to speak these same promises to me. Steve, you were chosen. And now for your obedience, these things that were spoken to me shall come upon you. Oh, my goodness. (laughs) I'm about to break out and break down now. So uh, it was profound. Me too. I'm about to 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 cry, Steve. (laughs) Yes, yeah. I, I, I think I, I can, I, I, well. I, I wasn't around for that, so this is the first I'm hearing of it, and I almost burst into so tears would right have, now. So that would have been um, in um, 
California Watch, and Apple because Watch. of the prayer garden. Because of the garden. Yes, yes, right. yeah. And, and, and that prayer garden until the end of his life was the, yes. the most important place. Like that's where he received so much from God and God showed yes. him so much in that place. And so it was really important. I just, it, 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 it touched my heart when he said that it would be nice to hear from a human voice. It's, it's that need for a confirmation, you know, when you're in that garden and you're in that world, sometimes you can wonder, am I sane? <laughs> Is this real? And so to have another person hear correctly mm -hmm. and share it with him, I know, and that's why I got my heart, my heart got a little emotional there because I know how much that would have meant to my dad mm -hmm. because a lot really? of people did not do that kind of thing with him because he was Kim Clement and they just expected... You know, well, he know, you know, but he was a, he was a man. He was a human. He and and he also felt insecure, and he also had doubts. And he would often like say, he would often say, "I wonder when someone's going to prophesy over me." <laughs> <laughs> well, he was so accurate. Everybody was probably intimidated, but you know what? You did the right thing, Steve, and you you helped him in that moment. And and what was really an important thing was keeping that house and that garden. And um, that's just so beautiful. Thank you for sharing that with me. I didn't know. I didn't know about that at all. Well, well I mean, and, and uh, you know, it was, again, it was something I never, 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 never do. <laughs> and yet here I am doing that right when right. you <laughs> praise to the Lord, bring a human being. To, and that meant a lot to me because he said, someone you trust. Are you kidding? God picked me. How cool is that? So, yeah. Anyway. Well, he did uh, trust you. I know that. Now, listen, though, before we go, you guys, I, I really want to make sure everybody knows and understands what you're doing with Elijah Streams now. Because some of our people are long-term supporters, and they remember Elijah List, the website. And I've gone on and been interviewed there on Elijah Streams, and I just love Elijah Streams. I was watching your interview with Mel Kay the other day, and it was awesome. It was such a great interview. So what you're doing here, even now, as Dad prophesied and as we're going on, it is really awesome to, to just watch Elijah Streams, especially for people like, like House of Destiny people who are really looking at the prophetic and understand it, that watching your, uh, your show... Uh, is is just it's making a huge difference right now. So can you share with people uh, what you have going on there and how they can watch and that kind of thing? Sure, it's a, a lot. You can find it at ElijahStreams.com. ElijahList.com still exists. We still have the written form. That, and once the shows are over, uh, we have a lot of times we have the the notes from the prophet who shared. Many times we have their notes or their actual written prophecy that they went over on the air. That goes out on the Elijah List. So it's ElijahList.com. That's the written portion. And Elijah Streams, you know, what the Elijah List that was so big, uh, Kim sat down at one time when we were in this little tiny studio. Uh, the only time I think I recorded him in my own little tiny baby studio, and he said, Steve, if you could see what I see, you're not going to believe where this is going. And he later prophesied our own satellite and all that. But it's Elijah Streams. You go to ElijahStreams.com. Uh, we are on, I'm just trying to think, I'm drawing a blank here. Um, yeah, we're on YouTube. You just go to YouTube. No, I'm sorry. We're not on YouTube because they booted us. We're on uh, Rumble. Rumble. Uh, under Rumble, you go to Elijah Streams, and we're there every day, Monday through Friday, 11 a.m. Pacific, every single day we're there. So uh, given the, the next prophetic revelation for the next prophet, it's very, very good, very balanced. And, and then we have Prophets and Patriots, which is part of that, where we bring on um, – like Mel Kay, and we had Eric Trump on you, as you had Eric Trump one time. I, you probably had him a couple times by now, right? So we had Eric, and then uh, we... No, you know, you know that Eric Trump... Trump uh, Eric Trump, the only uh, prophetic ministries he did interviews with were yours and ours. Really? Wow. Just the two of us, which I think, thinking about my dad and everything he prophesied that the two prophetic ministries he agreed to interview with were the two of us. And that was God's doing again. I definitely think so. I do too. I do too. So. But yeah, you know what? And, and, and the, the beautiful thing about Elijah's dreams also, just for our viewers, is um, it was actually what, what Steve is doing right now 
with Elijah's dreams. Dad prophesied. You just heard him tell the story about he was in his little studio and Dad said, wait till you see where this goes. And I'm telling you, it is worth it. So I really want to encourage everybody, uh, go to Rumble. That's where I've been watching it is Rumble. But you can go to Elijah's dreams. You can go to the website, Elijah List. And um, really have a good look because God chose Steve Schultz to do this. And um, it is just blooming and blooming in the midst of a season where we need the prophetic so much and we need people to understand it. And so, um, you know, God really blessed us with uh, just giving uh, our connection to you and, and, and our friendship, even now after dad's gone. You know, we're still together, even at the Reawaken America tour. Um, I've been there at the same time as Steve, and we've been going on back to back, and I've been able to hang out with him in the back, and it was always nice to see Steve, because, um, you know, especially there, it was new for me, and I didn't know anybody, and it was nice to have somebody I recognized and knew well and trusted to be able to come and, and have a conversation with. And so um, I thank you so much for joining us today, Steve. Yes, thank you, Steve. Nice to see you again. It's been nice quite a be while. Here, I think. <laughs> yeah, it has been a lot of years. So uh, I appreciate you guys bringing me on. Mm -hmm. Thanks for being in, in the people that prayed me through. Probably, I know you. Some of you prayed, and you know, we we came out the other side of that horrible condition. But yes, um, nice to be here. That's right. And look at you now. It's great. <laughs> yeah, loving it. Wonderful. Well, we do, we do. We do love you, Steve Schultz and uh, uh, Elijah Liss and Elijah Streams. Um, you know, we're, we're, we're definitely connected and we're, we're on the same path. And so um, uh, you definitely have to come back. You must come back, mm -hmm. Steve, and, and keep us we'll updated do, absolutely. as things transpire. Because from day to day, it's, it's from day to day, it's just yes. you never know what's going to happen in the news and in the world. And so having that pr prophetic perspective is good. And when we come together in agreement. We know God's in the midst of that. And so I think he's in the midst of this yes. today. And again, thank you for joining us. And everybody at the House of Destiny, thank you for joining us for another conversation. Yes. And we will see you next time. The grace of God is overwhelming. The favor of God is overwhelming. The goodness of God is overwhelming. And we stand at this place wonderfully encouraged by the Lord and ready to do his will. You know, Jesus prayed, your kingdom come, your will be done in earth as it is in heaven. We are receiving our offering, our house of destiny offering right now. And I want to encourage you to, to, as Kim would say, don't do nothing. I want to encourage you to use your faith you know, faith is what pleases God. And I'm not telling you what to do. I'm not compelling you to do something. I'm encouraging you to use your faith. You know why? Because I love you. And if you use your faith, God will use you. And God will do miracles in your life. We're not earning credits with God. We're not paying for the blessing. But what we are doing is being seen. God is seeing someone in the earth that is giving him glory. Think about this. Your kingdom come, your will be done in earth that is as it is in heaven. God's will is 100% accomplished in heaven. Come on, now wait a minute. How much of his will is being accomplished in the earth today through his people? I want to know that. It's hardly not being accomplished. I'm not saying his plan won't come to pass. I'm saying this world cosmos is at, is, is at en enmity with God. This world system is not in agreement with God. So when Jesus said, your will be done on earth, that was a big prayer and a big statement. You know how it's done? Through the house of destiny. You know how it's done? Through the people of God. God's will can actually be done in the earth. And as we're receiving our offering today, that is contributing to the plan, the purpose, 
and the destiny of God. And guess what? His will, it's going to come to pass. No one will stop it. No one will diminish it. It's miraculous. It's going to happen in you, for you, and with you. And it's going to happen for people that need to hear the message that the house of destiny brings, which is hope in Jesus Christ. Thank you for your faithfulness. Hi, I'm Jacqueline Clement. Thanks for worshiping with us today. We want to hear from you. If you have a prayer request or a testimony, you can email us at hope at houseofdestiny.org. We would also like to remind you of all of our viewing options. We have a live broadcast every Saturday and Wednesday. Monday is Prophetic Rewind for all things Kim Clement. Friday, tune into our Israel update for the latest news from Israel. We also have Destiny Worship and Destiny Kids. Thank you for being a part of the House of Destiny family. We love you guys and thank you for tuning in. Thank you.